Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rigimus to the Com video, we're going to be discussing pricing of the Intel Coffee Lake series, along with a benchmark of the i3-8350. Further confusion regarding RX Vega, and also hearing from a professional miner on his opinions on RX Vega as well, and why he believes that miners are not to blame for the shortage of the standalone versions of the card. With that said, let's jump into the Intel side of things first. So, Coffee Lake has indeed been listed on a website by the name of PC Canada. Currently, the CPUs are not in stock, but the estimated restock date is the 16th of September. As many of you know, there is a paper launch of the Coffee Lake CPUs in about a day, but from what my understanding goes, there are no review samples of CPUs or motherboards as yet, at least according to my partners and also a couple of other websites. So, more important than perhaps, you know, review samples at the moment, are we going to be expecting a major price premium for the 8700K? Just for clarification's sake, it is, of course, the first 6-core, 12-thread mainstream part from Intel, so are we going to see a price premium? Well, apparently, no. You're going to be looking at around 484 Canadian dollars. So that works out to be a couple of bucks more than, let's say, the 7700K, which cost around the 460 to 465 US, I'm um, sorry, Canadian dollars, 465 Canadian dollars, with the 8700 being around 407 Canadian dollars, the 8600K, which I suspect is going to be popular with many, is going to be around the 338 to probably 340 Canadian dollars. Obviously, how this translates to, let's say, your regional currency, which could be American dollars, it could be great British pounds, it could be the euro, the yen, whatever, remains to be seen, along with if this pricing is 100% accurate. But it does appear to at least give some hope that Intel aren't putting a major price premium on the next generation of processors. I did half suspect that this would be the case, but there was this little this little tinge of doubt that was in the back of my mind, thinking, hmm, I expect this to cost at least a hundred dollars or you know, whatever your regional currency is, more than let's say the seventy seven hundred K or the seventy six hundred K for the same processor, just because Intel are adding those additional cores. But I suspect that well, they just don't want to get pounded on by AMD for pricing, so it does make an awful lot of sense. There are also some benchmarks of the 8350K processor. Obviously, because it is a K, it is, well, you know, unlocked. And I decided just for lols to compare it against the 7600K. So what do we have? Well, both processors, of course, are four cores, four threads. But at least according to user mark, it does appear that the 7600K does have some advantages. We're going to have to wait and see how overclocking really affects this chip. But hey, the good news is that the 8350K is being listed, at least on this website, at around the 124 Great British Pounds mark, or if you prefer, 233.41 Canadian dollars. So that's considerably cheaper than the 7600K, so one would at least make a presumption that this processor is going to be a nice entry-level processor for gaming, which is a good thing, obviously, especially if it is fairly overclockable. You put that in with a reasonable motherboard, you put that in with a decent cooler, and you have a makings of at least a pretty decent PC. The biggest issue, once again, with Coffee Lake, at least in my opinion, is it does need a, another motherboard. I do wonder if that's something to do with a technical issue, perhaps power distribution or what, or whether Intel are just being greedy. Your guess is as good as mine, because as you can imagine, the company are remaining re rather silent. Okay, so we're going to be jumping back into the AMD pricing issue. I was going to actually say disaster, and to be honest, I don't really feel disaster is too strong of a word right now, because it's so confusing. It Like, tech websites are having issues understanding this, so I can't even imagine what it's like for the average customer. Uh, we'll talk about AMD's response of this, and to be honest, it's about as clear as mud um, in a few minutes, but let's talk about Andrew Gibson, along with a couple of other retailers. So, a website by the name of kitguru.net um, got in touch with Overclockers UK, specifically Andrew Gibson. He said launch price was 499 US dollars with no gains for the black card outlined by AMD as a launch only price. 
to them anyway, AMD allowed us to sell a set amount at this price, which was several hundred, clearly not enough as we sold out in approximately 15 minutes. After this, the regular price was 600 US dollars for with free games for both the black and silver cards, or 700 for the Aqua card plus taxes. Other sources, such as the Norwegian retailer Complet, has said that uh, today confirms that Techno, uh, to Techno, excuse me, that the price of just over 5,000 krona was limited to a limited edition of 275 graphics cards, as the company, as one of AMD's selected online stores, was allowed to sell at a favourable price at launch. The RX version we had for sale was a limited edition for this price and unfortunately has not been put up for sale again. When these are sold out, we had to remove this product from our pages, end quote. OC UK chime in once again, and he said, and I quote, 449 Great British Pounds is not possible. 499 US dollars is below what they cost us direct from the board partners by a large chunk of cash. AMD have rebated us to hit the 499 US dollars on a set amount of units. As such, 600 bucks is now the minimum. Unfortunately, AMD did not make the launch price plan clear to all the press or the consumer, which has caused a lot of confusion. If we sell cards at 449 and make money, well, that would be the price. And if this was the case, we probably would have sold around 5,000 units now at OCUK. Whereas, in reality, we've sold just a little over 1,000. Oh dear. So, making things even more confusing is AMD responded. And they said that they, quote, can't control the price. Um... Gamers Nexus managed to get hold of AMD and they issued a statement which clarified their previous early official statement. And by clarified, I mean not so much. The original official statement was ready on RX Vega 64. Demand continues to exceed expectations. AMD is working closely with its partners to address this demand. Our initial uh, launch quantities include standalone RX Vega 64 at 500 US dollars. The black... Um, Packs at 600 US dollars and the Aqua packs at 700 US dollars. We're working with our partners to restock all SKUs of Radiant RX Vega 64, including the standalone cards and the gamer packs, over the next few weeks. And we should expect uh, higher quantities of Vega cards arriving. Well, okay. Gamers Nexus wrote to AMD and managed to grab a few quotes from them, but honestly, this doesn't really answer too much. They, they asked, very simply, can you confirm for print whether RX Vega 64 cards, non-bundles, will be restocked at US$600? AMD responded, because we can't control pricing. I can't say that. They inquired once again, a follow-up though. To what does AMD attribute the price increase on retailers? What does AMD think caused the instant price hike at retailers? And... Basically, I suppose this is what I'm getting at. If the defense of we can't control the pricing and yet the launch price is clearly MSRP and has later spiked $100, there has to be some level of control somewhere. If that level of control is exercised through MDF, then that certainly seems like an important part of the story. And I'm curious to know as AMD's knowledge or speculation of what's caused the price spike. So what does AMD do? Well, they didn't respond. According to Gamers Nexus, anyway, and they said that there was no further gain to be ground, uh, sorry, further ground to be gained, excuse me, and AMD would not be providing additional information above that statement, and the representative was not authorised to discuss pricing questions. No. Now, I was actually contacted by a miner, and he has asked to remain anonymous, so I'm not going to use his uh, real name. Um, he, I shall just call him Dragon because that's one of his online names, part of his online name. So uh, he said, and I quote, I know miners take a lot of flack at the moment, but I'm emailing you to give you some useful information about mining professionally. It's his full-time job. I'm one of the people who bought 50 graphics cards at a time, mine mainly the 480s and 470s, and they give the best mega hash per watt. I know there's been a lot of hype about Vega's mining performance. That said, I would not buy Vega for a few reasons. Its performance per watt is bad for mining Ethereum or Mf hash algorithm when compared to the RX 400 series built on LPP. 
Vega is expensive for miners to buy. Vega is not moddable due to the hardware inspection of VBIOS. This was done through the drivers in Polaris, not hardware, and could be patched. AMD have already claimed that they will be producing mining cards built on Polaris. Hopefully they will use their LPP, low power process transistors, and I'll wait for those so they pay better in the long run and give me more headroom for not backing up power circuitry at my home. A common problem for large scale mining at home miners. And finally, the fifth one is a killer for Vega. You need a lot more power supplies, PCI connectors for multiple GPU configurations, which are expensive and drastically reduce my turn on investment. An 8 plus card rig may need 2 times 1300 watt PSUs, and you could get away with 1000 PSUs, but I like to run with 25 to 30% headroom for hardware longevity and for safety reasons. End quote. Okay, so before I continue with a final bit of information from him, Feel free to get in contact with me if you're a miner and you have an opinion. I know some of you don't want to respond on comments because gamers tend to not go so well with miners at the moment. And that's why he's contacting me via email. You can do so at paul at redgamingtech.com. Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, he continues by saying that on this subject, Vega is the fastest hashing and compute based card. But in my opinion, it's useless if you need a nuclear reactor to power it for mining. Well, I, there's an obvious disconnect between the retailers, the AIB partners, and AMD. Essentially what Gibbo said is that they are not getting the cards cheap enough to sell the cards at the, re at the original stated price. They're going to lose money, essentially, per card sold. And obviously, if you're a re retailer... You can't afford to do that because that's not how a business operates. You're going to go broke. The second thing is that, once again, according to Gibbo, he's barely sold a thousand cards. If you were to mosey on to various websites, you can pick up a pack pretty easily, or like Black Pack or whatever, that obviously has <coughs> those free games in. And obviously the games aren't free. So what is going on? Now, I'm not accusing anyone. That's the thing. Because, honestly, I just want to know what the hell the, 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 the answer is at this point. Because, obviously, if the real price of Vega is 100 bucks more, that's not good for all the reviewers who did reviews. Because, well, it essentially means conclusions are different. My whole thing is, look, the Vega 64 basically ties with the GTX 1080. The... Vega 56, in my opinion, is the better buy. A bit like the, let's say, the 290 was a better buy than the 290X. And one could actually make a compelling argument that the GTX 670 was a better argument, uh, sorry, a better buy than the GTX 680. Obviously, this is pissing off people. And frankly, I don't blame people from getting very annoyed about this whole situation because you just don't know what the best course of action is. Well... Sorry I can't be of more help here, but it just, no one seems to know. Once again, AIB partners are telling uh, reviewers and tech journalists one thing, and this goes from what I'm hearing as well. Retailers, well, retailers, you're hearing it from Gibbo, uh, OC UK in other words, Complet, and others as well have said much the same thing, and AMD are saying something totally different. I don't believe the mining craze is necessarily pushing up Vega, Obviously, you can get the standalone packs as well, and, well, they, they're they just not limited in supply. You can buy the packs very easily. But, once again, it's the standalone cards that are very difficult. So, are there very few standalone cards? It would appear so. So, why isn't something being done with that? Why don't AMD just reduce the amount of cards that are going towards the packs and then just add more to standalone? The standalone RX Vegas, so you can buy them at the 500 US dollar mark. Or is it a case of the cards are costing more than what AMD thought they would to produce? Maybe, for example, the HBM memory has gone up in price. Or maybe they're not getting good enough yields of the Radeon Vega 64s. And that's another thing that's a contributing factor. I don't know that. Obviously, I'm not telling you that that's a rumour. I just, I'm speculating. Because honestly, that's all we've got to go on right now. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Sorry I can't be more helpful on this one. We're just going to have to wait for someone, somewhere, to issue an official statement to kind of explain this. And obviously at this point, it's really got to come from AMD themselves. They've got to chat to vendors. They've got to chat to their AIB partners. 
And basically, we as gamers kind of deserve to know, or actually, forget gamers, just customers, we kind of deserve to know what the hell's going on here. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.